Sooner Scoop HD. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, had a great uh, again, just post game Iowa State. Again, had a, a really strong uh, road win. Loved our uh, preparation all week. Uh, after the Kansas ball game, thought our guys came back and responded uh, really well, hungry, um, super coachable, uh, ready to get better, willing to put the work in. I thought our guys, uh, again, from the moment we uh, loaded the buses uh, at 1 o'clock to head to the airport, I thought our guys had a, you know, tr a great approach, um, brought our own energy, tremendous uh, focus and intensity, passion, all the things that you uh, got to have to to play well. Um, their mindset um, from the get go was really really strong. So I think that's where it all starts. Again, have an attitude and toughness, and go on the road to win and uh, play with a great physicality. Fought through uh, adversity. Nothing's ever easy uh, about winning and competing and. Um, uh, really uh, happy for our guys to be able to reward them with victory, a hard-fought win, and uh, just like Iowa State has played all year, you know they're not going to concede anything. You're going to have to earn it. So, uh, lends credibility what we've been asking our guys. You know the work and the precision and the details and situational football. And again, won the turnover margin by two, uh, won the third uh, third down. Uh, battle won the rushing total 182 to 66, and uh, and then dominated in the kicking game. Uh, our season best plus 85, you know, hidden yards. So that's a formula for success: winning different kinds of uh, kind of ways, uh, you know, on the year. And uh, again, it's small, um, but it 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 still counts. And small being you know improvement. You know, there's incremental improvement across the board, individual, unit, um, certainly as a team. That's, you know, what we want to be able to uh, be able to do as we finish the season out in the regular season is continue to, to get better and improve. And our best players have got to continue to lead the way. Uh, you know, not everybody's going to play a perfect game. What I love is, you know, other guys stepped up and made made plays when we had to. So loved how we ran the ball. I love the efficiency of our offense. I love the the domination in the kicking game. I I, I love seeing the strain. Uh, certainly the punter and the kicker, the snapper uh, uh, were excellent. I think that you know I think that goes without saying. But I, I love the strain um, in protection and coverage. Uh, doing the details uh, that we got to do. There's a lot that goes in uh, to executing at a high level. You're not just doing the same things, uh, for example, on your punt team and your alignments and your protections. You know, they're doing something different, forces you to have to do some different things as well. So I loved, uh, you know, again, the effort uh, late in the game to, you know, pin a couple of punts deep. A lot, again, a lot of uh, energy and toughness and strain got to go into that as well. So I don't take any of uh, any of that for granted and um, we got a great chance to again a, a great opportunity to uh, you know to have a really strong finish and, it, and a lot of things got to go our way and, and our guys got to um, we got to be able to coach well and, and uh, continue to get better and improve uh, on the field and but I, I love the opportunity that's sitting in front of us right now and uh, we're gonna have to continue to win the turnover margin and uh, you know, be efficient in the red zone and continue to to, to play well in the third and the fourth down uh, uh, phases. And certainly, again, uh, the kicking game will be a big part of it. But I, again, love how we're uh, continue to uh, execute on on offense and again getting a little better on defense. And and again, the kicking game is is going really really well. So, you know, for for you know for us, you know. You know, every game there's something that's on the line, and uh, you know we we talk about you know having a you know one game approach and you know going one or no this week, but you know we need to be who we are and believe in in what this team is capable of doing. That's where it all starts, and not let you know other people tell us you know who we are.
And so that's a challenge to the players. Our leadership has continued to be really strong. And, uh, you know, we got another uh, tremendous challenge, uh, you know, defending Big 12 champions uh, in, in Baylor. Uh, they're playing really well right now. Same record as we have uh, in overall record at five and three. You know, uh, Coach Aranda's done a, a terrific job in his third year there. Uh, you know, their three loss, losses this year have come by, come by a, a combined 20 points. Um, they're running the football incredibly well. I think their scoring is top 15 in the country, just under, you know, 40 points a game. And uh, they've got, you know, four seniors on their offensive line. Uh, they've played a ton of uh, really good football. Uh, they're fifth in the country in fourth down conversion, so very aggressive. Uh, you know, they're, I'm sure there must be an analytics uh, component to that because uh, they're really aggressive. They're con uh, converting on almost 70% of their fourth downs, and not just fourth and one, like all kinds of fourth downs. Uh, they're running back freshmen. Uh, Reese has been playing incredibly well. Uh, leads the, the Big 12 with 12 rushing touchdowns. And uh, quarterback Shapin is a really good player, converting almost 70% of his passes. And uh, he's fourth in the, in the conference. We got to, do we not have the best quarterback efficiency as a conference? That would be a good question to have. I bet we do. Uh, our quarterback efficiency in this conference uh, this year is incredibly uh, high. And he's fourth in the, in the conference that way, making great decisions. and. Got a great system. Coach Grimes had a lot of success at a lot of places, and and uh, love you know the attitude his guys play with. They play aggressive, they play tough, they play physical, um, they play disciplined, and they do the same thing. It's a mirror image on the defensive side of the ball. So this is going to be a great, great challenge. I think the last two times we've played them, they've held us to 20 or less points and under 300 yards of offense. Uh, the last two times that we've we've played them, so. I think they're top 30 in the country, you know, in total defense. So again, we got a, another big challenge uh, this week, but at the end of the day, it's going to be about us and just getting better. We got to play our most physical game of the year this uh, this week, and continue to play with the discipline, uh, the toughness, and the attitude that it takes to uh, to win. So, uh, with that, I'll open it up. Brian, I got a, kind of a two-part question about injuries. Uh, first of all, do you have an update on Javante Barnes? And then secondly, Damian, Damon Harmon, it's been one exactly one month since that injury at TCU. When something like that happens, a scary moment like that, how much do you see a player really feel perspective, both mentally and physically, about the game of football? Yeah, um, don't know any more about Javante. You know, he felt a little better. Hopefully, again, those uh, hamstrings are, are uh you never know, you know, how they're going to respond. So you might run back out there uh, today and then do something to, to pull it again. So I, I would think he would be a game time uh, decision, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't, it wasn't a severe pull. Um, so hopefully we can get him back. He's been playing really well. And those kinds of injuries, those are scary, you know. Those are scary. A lot, I'm sure, goes through a player's mind, uh, certainly to, through the families. Uh, a lot of discussion probably there, and and, uh, and then obviously using you know the expertise of the medical staff, uh, things of that nature. Uh, but that's a you know, scary thing for all of us, you know, to see. So uh, fortunate it wasn't worse. Uh, and uh, Demond, it was good to have him back out there uh, running around last week. I know he was anxious to do so, uh, and thankful, you know, that uh, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't worse. Mm hmm. Yeah, Brent, you mentioned uh, a couple times Michael Turk and the job that he's done. He said on Saturday that he wasn't real happy with the way he was performing early in the season. What what have you seen from him that he's done better outside of just, you know, the results that uh, yeah. you've seen? That's a good question. He uh, First, he has awareness. I'm not, you know, doesn't live in La La Land. Well, every once in a while you have a player that lives in La La Land and has a, he's delusional about, you know, how he's playing and performing. Uh, so he's got good awareness. Uh, you got to have that uh, before you can create the change that you want. You got to have great self-awareness, uh, even through a frustrating, I guess if he was frustrated, I don't want to speak for him, uh, but when you're not performing the way you're capable of, a lot of times there can be some frustration uh, for a player. So he's able to not be his own worst enemy. 
uh, and just go back to work, the, the fundamentals. Uh, you know, given plenty of opportunities, we emphasized a lot of pooch situations where a lot of times we're going to get a first down, you know, maybe two first downs, and now you're in pooch situation, uh, you know, with the way he can kick the ball. So uh, he just went to work. We, we got a lot of good live work in those situations, and he started getting a little bit better. And, um, you know, there's a fundamental technique aspect to it that I think he just really got back to some of the basics, you know, from a pooch standpoint. And again, our coverage guys have gotten better too from an awareness and the execution of that pooch situation. Somebody's got to, you know, uh, face up the football, the return man, and then we got to have some guys that are on, in behind uh, that protects the goal line as well. And so we've all kind of worked together better. And, uh, you know, you, you, obviously when you look at punters, you think about that, just the raw punting average or, you know, big plays like happened with, on Saturday a couple long ones and, and pinning them uh, deep. How big is the just the fact that he's been able to limit returns on those even when they're not just you know massive punts? Yeah, it's, it's huge. Uh, again, field position's everything. Those yards add up. This field position turns into points if it's not in your favor. Uh, you know, and punt it out of our end zone and flip the field or again, or hey, let's get it to, they catch it around, you know, middle of the field there, plus or minus 50 but there's no return uh, that's that's tremendous the hang time is what you're you know alluding to and uh it's been a, a big part of uh playing efficient you know on both sides of the ball um, but again obviously again he he flipped the field a couple of times just outstanding and that changes the complexity of a drive and certainly at the end of the day changes the complexity of the game you know their how they operate their comfort level it's a lot different. They get the ball at the 40, uh, you know, as opposed to, you know, inside the 20. Big difference. So uh, their approach, their game plan, their call sheet, they have a call sheet that says backed up, <laughs> right? And and then if it's a close game, you know, it's it's one thing. And then if it's, all right, we got to put together a drive, now, now things can get a little different for that quarterback. So... It affects a lot of things, and we got a couple of you know turnovers, you know, in that situation. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brent, uh, wanted to ask you about uh, Deshaun White. He he talked to us yesterday about how he's gotten more and more comfortable just with every game, and that's maybe helped him make a few more extra plays the last couple of games. Just what have you seen from his growth this season and uh, his comfort level, especially playing that cheated position? Yeah, I mean, if you if you use the things that he has said. You know, I think he's put a lot more time into studying the game on his own with his teammates, really understanding intimately, trying to have a, a grasp of the game plan like the coordinator uh, is calling it. Uh, understand not just the what, and, but the how and the why and the when. So there's a maturation from an intelligence, a football intelligence standpoint that he's put a lot of hard work in it, taking great notes every day. Uh, you know, he's applying the knowledge that he's been given uh, to game day and not trying to do too much. Uh, but, uh, you know, he'll be the first one to tell you he didn't watch film, you know, uh, last year or previously uh, on Sundays, for example, on his own. Uh, so he's he's just made a made it a routine. Hey, I'm going to come in and uh, get treatment and uh, rehab and uh, feed my body and get up, go to church, and kind of get into a routine. Uh, and part of that's, you know, just evaluating himself, taking a grade sheet and going hunkering down and, uh, you know, going through the game and, and then getting a head start, you know, with the next opponent. So uh, just putting the work in, you know, that's how you are rewarded. This game will reward you for that and punish you if you're, if you're on the wrong side of it. So I think those are the biggest things, just having a different appro approach. And then a pre-snap, what's my approach to get ready? You know, I got to get a call. I got to communicate. I got to identify a formation. Look at pre-snap ten tendencies. See a little to see a lot. Uh, I think you know, knowing what you're seeing and what it's telling you. There's always a story, you know, pre and post snap. And so I think he has a better understanding uh, of of what that looks like, and it's helped him play a little bit more sure of himself and more sound. Uh, and has made you know a bunch of plays as a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Brent, I know we're still a month and a half away from signing day, but when the seat, when this last month happened, do you have like a message to the to the class or has it been tougher than you thought to try to maintain what you what you got? No, no different message. Uh, um, you try to use 
um, when you're selling yourself and you have no track record, you're trying to sell what you've accomplished uh, in the past, I mean, you have some kind of a track record, uh, good or bad, um, whether it's coaching a position, it's coaching a unit, um, being a part of experiences, and so you continue to nurture that. The biggest thing is you build relationships. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when uh, in the recruiting world, uh, you know, it never stops when a guy commits. People are still going to try to uh, recruit people, and, and sometimes guys make, they, they, they uh, change their minds. That's their right. That's part of the process. Uh, you don't like it when you're, when you're not on the right side of it, uh, but you're always, you know, uh, you know, checking the temperature of the water to to see if all right, this guy, I'm not sure about, you know. Uh, so you're really doing that from the from the get go, uh, like this guy committed, but I'm not sure for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's uh, where they where they're located. Uh, family support or not, you know, sometimes you get maybe a, a parent that's looking at it, you know, uh, more, maybe more in an agent role as opposed to, you know, somebody going to take the baton, you know, uh, from us and, and they got to, you know, help my son grow from boyhood to manhood. You know, some people look at it more from a business standpoint. Some of it look uh, from a, a growth and maturation and, and a football opportunity too. So a lot goes into it. Uh, you know, recruiting uh, is tough and demanding, it's challenging, and you're dealing with emotions, real emotions, and real life time opportunities. So uh, hopefully you, you, you do things right, um, you have, you've had success, you got people that are effective communicators and uh, relationship driven and hardworking, uh, you'll be on a, on a really good strong side of it, and every once in a while, you know, things don't go your way. That's, I don't ever lose sleep over somebody uh, that we never had uh, that um, was supposedly lost. You know, if they come here in this program and uh, they go on that field for us and then they, they leave, then that's somebody that we lost. And uh, so I don't, there's a bunch of great players. We, we've identified a handful of them, uh, challenged the staff a couple of weeks ago to, you know, some of the best players that have played here, uh, our previous stops uh, were guys that were under the radar going into their senior year. And uh, with diligence and um, uh, with that kind of a mindset, you find some great players that were undervalued. I think more now than ever, there'll be more and more players uh, that are overlooked for, for a lot of reasons. Number one, is because everybody in such a hurry to get to the next class, the 24 class, the 25 class, now the 26 class. Some of the guys, schools are in the 27th. And you only have so much time in a day. And what about that 23 guy that just had his first four games or his last four games? You know, you saw him, you know, six months ago and he was 6'1", but now he's 6'3 and a half, but you don't know because you, you stopped recruiting him. You know, he didn't meet the measurables or what have you. Again, there's a, a million different things or, or some schools or, hey, let's, all right, we, we didn't identify anybody in the 23 class uh, from, say, we, last time we offered people was in the summer. And now we're not watching any of the, the fall. And I'm not saying that this is the game plan, but it's a byproduct. Now we're, who, now they're trying to identify who might be in the transfer portal, who will be, or we're going to save these five spots for portal guys. And we're moving on to the 24 class. And then when the portal, uh, names get in there. We that's what we got. We got to get a tackle. We got to get a receiver. Whatever it is, and they're not looking for those seniors that are developing. Uh, Jeremy Beal, uh, you know Isaiah Simmons, you know Kayvon Wallace, uh, uh, a bunch of great great players uh, that you didn't offer uh, until late. Now, Mark Clayton, Mark was pretty good, you know, and um, and there's countless others. But, you know, guys that, uh, you know, uh, that they just come on out of nowhere. And uh, they become, you know, it's a developmental game. And so you're missing uh, uh, a guy's senior year is, is what you got to be careful. So we challenge the staff. We, all right, let's look at these guys in these under-recruited states that maybe have had FB, FBS offers in the last, you know, month. You know, that's one way to, you know, to – trying to cut to the chase, find a shortcut to find guys. And, uh, 
and uh, go from there. Start watching and evaluating, and, and 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 don't worry about the popularity contests. Find out if these guys can play, and find about the intangibles and all those kind of things. So, I love that. I, I think that's exciting. I think that's uh, no, that's not real quote unquote sexy, uh, but I think that's I think that you know a, a portion of your team every year needs to be built from that. And uh, we got to be mindful, and, and I got to do a great job of protecting uh, that part of our program. And instead of chasing a guy that's been committed to you know three schools, uh, you know since August, uh, that has a commitment issue, obviously uh, he'll have that same uh, commitment issue when he comes, and things don't happen easy and quick for himself. So uh, there, there's a lot of that that goes into it. That's not uh, foolproof, um, but. You know, that's uh, our philosophy when it comes to, you know, a lot of that. And, again, uh, recruiting's always tough. If, you, if, you, if you're Alabama, they'll say, you know, everybody uh, has got their own pitch to, to recruit against Alabama, you know, and believe it or not. Uh, I don't think it's – I don't think it's – why would you want to go there? Because they win all the time. I don't think that's it. Uh, maybe it's, uh, hey, man, you, you, we, we need you to play today, you know. And uh, you might have to wait. But uh, if I'm Alabama, you know, and, and the way we want to be is you want to get it to be so good when you go to that practice field every day, you have, you have no other option but to improve. And you practice this game a lot more than you actually play it. And so you go to practice every day, you're going to improve and get better. You're going against the best of the best. That makes you get better. You can't run and hide and get into – uh, bad habits. You'll be exposed every single day. And I, I want to create a, a practice field uh, that systematically does that. And then uh, the good on good does that for you. And that's how you exponentially develop, you know, players that buy into that. Let's go to Eli. Right, Billy, I think there are 84 snaps, something close to that on Saturday. He played about 44. I guess when you're working a guy back in, what goes into that management plan and then on game day, how are you managing? Yeah, that? how he feels. You know, we, we honestly didn't know whether or not he'd be able to play at all. Uh, and then after Thursday, he still looked pretty good, but he's got that big old brace on. Uh, but he f still functions. You know, Billy's quick twitch. He's fast and explosive. And it really didn't seem to limit him tremendously. Mentally, it might have. I, I didn't ask him, you know. Uh, sometimes you're, you you got to be careful to ask questions that you're not prepared to hear the answer. Uh, but he probably played a little more than um, uh, than we probably should have. I don't know what that means. He he did fine. He graded well. Uh, you know, to go from zero to sixty, it's no surprise. That's what he's capable capable of. But uh, you know, that was more snaps than I thought that he would. But he, he played. Uh, you know, pretty well, and the other guys played pretty well around him as well. Uh, and he he's a very tough, competitive guy. Don't he doesn't want to be off the field. You said last night he likes the brace, but uh, do you imagine it's going to be a progression from here, or is he pretty close to where he needs to be? Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I just watch a guy run around. He looks pretty good. Um, my thing, my question is to him: How do you feel? You know, is there pain? Is there is there swelling? Uh, I don't want to, you know, put him in harm's way, and that was my fear. Of, uh, and I don't think he can't, you know, from the trainer's standpoint, he came back right on time. Everybody heals different, you know, and he had a sprain, and uh, and then he was very diligent in his and all his rehab and uh, recovery stuff. So, and then he's a quick healer. Obviously, never been hurt before. Uh, so. But he's handled it well. I think mentally is a big part of it too. You know how a guy, uh, confidence-wise, feels, and he, you know, his confidence is through the roof. Sorry, James. You know, Brett. I think one of the interesting aspects of this game you've touched on a little bit. Their experience in their offensive line is somewhat unusual. With guys coming out and things like that. You have that many guys that are five, six-year guys. Your defensive line is beginning to come on and things. Talk about that matchup. And yeah, it's you know it's going to be to me the matchup. Uh, to be honest with you, and uh, it's a great great challenge. Our guys know that. And the first thing we before we left that locker room in Ames, uh, that's what we addressed. You know, I didn't. Uh, you're doing six thousand things. Uh, in your first off season, and um, they're one of the teams that I'm like, what are they doing? You know, but again, uh, again, Coach Bryles did a great job while he was there too, and 
No, but uh, they were doing it in a, in a different style. I knew that. And so I wanted to really uh, look at what they were doing on um, both sides of the ball, try to get a feel. You know, one of the things I learned going from uh, Oklahoma to Clemson is you got to, as a coordinator, a play caller, um, leader, uh, you know, a big part of your job is to compete. And uh, the great players have a level of anticipation through preparation, right? right? They, they look like, man, he jumped that. Or, you know, how do you know to do that? You know, that comes from preparation. That comes from anticipation, playing really fast and aggressive. Well, play caller, same thing. So, you know, and there's an advantage if you've been in the conference for five years or eight years and you know these other schools, you know their, you know their go-tos, you know their players, uh, you know their strengths, their weaknesses. And so, you know, uh, certainly didn't have that advantage. Uh, but I did want to get a glimpse of, you know, different teams. Uh, to see what they're doing and as you go through a season you can get off the field and you compete against them there's a there's a whole nother level of of education and um you're just kind of putting it in your back pocket you know uh, when you're fighting this guy this is how he likes to fight when you're fighting this guy he don't fight like that guy he fights like this and so figuring all that out you have to actually go and compete and uh and fight and uh but that's going to, you know, it didn't take me long to figure out, all right, they're big, strong, physical, you're going to punch you in the mouth, blow to your nose, uh, knock you down, run over you, step on you. That's their, their mindset. And they're playing uh, with that edge and that toughness, the confidence, the belief uh, as well. You know, having played a lot of football, having played a lot of football in that system, uh, and again, the coordinator, uh, Coach Grimes, he does a great job, O-line guy. Uh, they take on the personality of him. Grant, if I can ask you know, about your thought on redshirting at this point, it's that COVID years are you know, going to be behind you guys. So, you know, what's your general thought on a freshman that's kind of close? What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, again, it's based on, again, the role that they have now and um, whether or not somebody else can do it uh, or if you see an expanded role for them, whether that's injuries or now they're just kind of coming on, the light's starting to go on. Uh, it's not an exact science to it. We want to be a developmental program. Uh, certainly don't want to waste someone's year uh, ever uh, in any way, shape, or form. And so, uh, you know, I just want to be mindful uh, to, to that part of it too, you know, where, you know, these guys, uh, you know, they deserve, you know, that, that type of, um, uh, you know, thoroughness and thoughtfulness, you know, to their, their career, their body of their career. So um, there's that, if they're playing a consistent, smaller role, um, that's okay too, you know. Again, I think of a guy like, you know, you guys deal in the media with Teddy. You know, Teddy didn't play a whole lot, and he ended up getting fired on some special teams units, but he was a legit second team guy. It's a very hard thing to, to gauge uh, on how to approach it, do you, you know. You know, I've, I've redshirted guys later in their career when you all of a sudden you become loaded at that position and he could go there and, and be a starter, but these other guys are right there with him. But he's the only guy that can't redshirt. These guys are going to all go to graduate, or he's the only guy that can redshirt. These other guys are all going to graduate. I uh, did that with a guy named Skowski at uh, Clemson. I redshirted him, uh, played him in the last four games in championship phase. Uh, played him in, in the playoffs and the national championship, saved him, but just repped him and got him ready, kept him fresh. Now that'll be, that's something you're not talking about, but that's something that, you know, that maybe for whatever reason you have to play them earlier than you would like. And you're always looking, how can we get that year back if there's ever an opportunity? Uh, and, uh, but I want to be really respectful to the kids and their future. Uh, and, and certainly for us as a program, you know, that, uh, if we're going to get every freshman ready to play, uh, and then some of them show that they're ready for it mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, and some and some don't. Uh, and sometimes it takes a number of weeks of practices within the season. Uh, one, you're staying healthy, and two, they're not really responding. Or flips out, you're not staying healthy, and they're really growing quickly uh, and maturing quickly. And now you got to find more of a role for them. So got a bunch of people. So one question, please. Back left, John Hoover. Yeah, Brent, um, there's some interesting parallels in your career and Dave Aranda's career, uh, just the way you guys have came up, first-time head coaches, all that stuff. 
I just wonder, I want to explore your interactions with him through the years, your relationship with him. Obviously, you played in the, the what, 19, 20 uh, championship game. But there's, have you been to like Baton Rouge or Wisconsin when he was there, you know, picking his brain, or has he visited you, anything like that? Or we, We've um, visited on the phone uh, a number of times uh, over the years. Again, I've seen him on the recruiting trail and some of our downtime we've been able to visit. Uh, but not uh, the travel uh, visit. And you like what he's about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, great guy, first of all, a great person. Uh, just, he's a good dude and um, really smart, really good teacher. Uh, they offered my, one of my sons, uh, Jake, uh, at LSU. Uh, and um, so we started to get to know each other that way. We never ended up taking a trip there. Uh, his mama won the recruiting battle. So, uh, Dave didn't make the cut. Uh, <laughs> no, but, um, and then he's just, he's a first class guy, you know, everywhere he's been. He's got a great reputation, does things the right way. Uh, he's a good man, excellent football coach. Right side, mm -hmm. Jenny. Hey, Brent, um, I wonder if you could share how you've seen uh, Andrew Rame come along this year. He was obviously playing a lot before you got here, but he takes over that center position after Creed leaves, which is clearly a, you know, it's a huge hole to fill. How, but how have you seen him come along this year? Yeah, um, probably his, um, as a leader, he's really improved as a leader. And, and in fairness to him, uh, you know, everybody's in survival mode in, in uh, uh, Matt Drills. And then we get to spring ball and he gets injured. And he very, very, very limited. Uh, maybe two days and he springs springs a he gets a high sprain and he's he's out and so you know he's it's hard to lead when you're not practicing and competing with your teammates so really didn't know what he's capable of and then we go to the summer and he's still recovering to a certain degree and we don't we don't see our guys in in that role you're high-fiving and uh getting your arm around them and and really that's about it you know in the summertime uh, we are, you know, a full-time staff, I'm not talking about Coach Schmidt. And then, again, I think he's finding his role. And Am I the leader? And Am I good enough? I'm not asking, saying him in particular, but just that, that part of growth. And I think the more success he's had, the, the more confident he's gotten. And uh, Bill's done a great job of, hey, man, I gotta, you can't just – I can't be the only leader here. If we're going to be at our best, this has got to be player-driven. And so helping guys, you have to be very intentional as a coach to help guys lead, uh, learn how to lead. You're giving them um, small task, you know, daily task. I need you to do this. I need you to go get your arm around Jacob Sexton. I need you to, whatever it is, I need you to say something, you know, to the guys after practice. All right. Anybody got anything to say? Oh, Andrew, you have something to say? So you kind of set them up for, you know, try to give them some layups uh, in and then next thing you know, it becomes more and more comfortable the more you do it. So, uh, but he's playing exceptionally well right now. Uh, he's playing really well. And um, there's a, does a great job from a communication standpoint, knowing the game plan. Uh, you know, he's, he's been the model of consistency and he's improved. Um, he's just gotten better and better as the season's gone on. So he's been a, a real uh, rock force, you know. Uh, both, you know, in his play and becoming a better leader. You know, I say better. He's always led by example, um, but just more vocal. Gary? Brent, how much of the last two weeks have been about you sort of squaring your jaw and saying, I, I got this? Just just you. I, you talked in, I know you talked in general terms about the team, you know, sort of finding its way. Out of, out of the storm is what you called it, I think, uh, after Texas. W what about you just in particular? I mean, I've just tried to continue to be me, you know. Uh, I'm just a, and not change through uh, success or failure. I've, that's just, I've just always tried to take an even-keeled approach to, to all of it. And I think that's having humility, um, respect for you can be, it doesn't take much to be on the wrong side of it. Uh, and uh, and there's a toughness aspect that I like to look at myself as tough. I'm tough-minded. Uh, I I grew up in a tough way, and I've had to earn you know what I've gotten. Uh, nothing's been handed to me in in any way, in my opinion. And 
uh, I'm convicted on uh, uh, in certain things from a leadership standpoint and how you develop uh, and have success and how you develop a player, a unit, uh, a team, um, people. You develop people. Coaching is the highest calling of development of people. Uh, you got to develop people first uh, as a coach, uh, and then being you know from an in an area of expertise, if you will, from the X's and O's standpoint. And uh, so, I don't know. I've had a lot of experience of 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 bad and good, and try to you know lean on all of that. And then um, you know I've gotten a ton of encouragement. I told you I, I don't like people. Again, I appreciate support and things like that. Parents, uh, my wife, um, people I work with. Uh, certainly, I got you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters uh, of, of encouragement. You know, and uh, and that's all. Man, it makes you it makes you feel great. You know, uh, but I don't. I, I would rather not. I'd rather have it be a letter of congratulations. Uh, to be honest, uh, than you know words of encouragement. Uh, but um, it, uh, I'm, I'm saying, if you ask the ask a player, I don't know. Ask a player, has he changed at all? You know, I don't feel like so. I mean, again, I don't. I, I like adversity. I like to create it. I love to strain. I like to create a lot of stress. I, I, I do that. I make people uncomfortable sometimes uh, in the in the in in the in the coaching world, uh, whether it's uh, with coaches or or, or players. Um, because I think that's where you can get everybody with a high sense of urgency. I think that we're all at our best that way. And um, so the, the, the more stress there is, I think uh, uh, the better opportunity there is to improve and get better. So I'm, I'm kind of, I've normalized uh, uh, stress and struggle. Uh, and a lot of times it's because I just, I make it up, you know, even through all the success that if Coach Sweeney was saying how great we were, I was telling us how, how much we stink. And uh, like literally, we, we did a great job, good cop, bad cop, uh, and to a point where sometimes guys don't like me. And that's okay too, you know, just like your kids. You know, you always love them and they always love you, but sometimes we don't like each other. So I'm trying to create, and I had to have a, a talk with the defense on Friday, like, just so y'all know, here's who here's who I am. We get on that practice field. We get in this this meeting room. Uh, you, there's going to be a lot of times that you don't like me at all, and I like that you don't like me. You know, and if you uh, strain and fight and compete out of spite, good. I'm getting what I want, and you're getting what you need. Uh, but square my jaw. I don't know. I've always felt like I've always done that. Sometimes you guys see one version, and then the players they see a whole other version. Good and bad, you know, good and tough. Uh, encouraging and uh, very demanding. So, um, but I do think inherently that when you're faced, you feel like, again, uh, uh, this week, this day, this moment, it, you're, your back's against the wall. I think, I think that there's where you rely on your foundation, your beliefs, uh, your convictions. Uh, you, know, you know, players would be like this. They want to see all of a sudden, you're going to change up now. How are we going to do this team meeting today, coach? You know, <laughs> right? Or, you know, pre practice, post practice, how you act? I'm sure they're watching, you know? And, uh, and I, would, I would say they said uh, he, he, he's remained exactly the same. I would, I would guess, because I feel like I have. Yep. Barry? Yeah, Brad, you mentioned one, two in a row have a chance to finish strong. In, in addition to what that would do for this group of guys and this season, Team 128, what would a strong finish do for you going forward? Well, again, I, I'm, I'm all about the players. What, you know, what's I, I want them to, to have the kind of finish. They've, they've worked incredibly hard, and uh, you know, uh, through through mat drills, through the you know, uh, you know, the get ready phase, the transformation phase, you know, start of the season. Uh, the summertime, all the work that they've put into it, you want to see them have success. So that's what I want to see, you know. And I want them to, at the end of the year, you know, we called up one last time to have no regrets. And that's been my challenge. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Don't worry about, uh, you know, the winning and the losing. Don't focus on that. Focus on the effort and the details and the preparation and the commitment and the sacrifice and the belief and the trust and the support for one another. Focus on that. Because that's that's how you're going to be judged. The result will take care of itself. Now you come up short, 
and you've done everything that you can possibly do, then you have no regret. That's for all of us. And, and so, you know, not going to be judged by, you know, a scoreboard. And, and, uh, and winning is important. I like to win. And there's a difference between winning and losing. There ain't no, oh, it's an ugly win. No, it, win is a win in any way, shape, or form. And people that say, oh, that's an ugly win are people that have no respect or value on what it takes to win, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, so anyway, um, you know, finish the way we're capable of, of finishing. And when we've put it all together, I think we've shown the kind of team that we're capable of being. Uh, and so continue to improve. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get us to, to where, and again, we're happy with the result. But the biggest thing is this is focus on putting everything we got into it every single day, one day at a time. And let's just see where we're at. I think we got 23 days left of practice and games in the regular season right now in front of us. And that's, you put it like that, and you put that hourglass right there, and then time's ticking. And, and these guys want to leave, you know, they want to have a great, they want to leave a mark. And, uh, you know, they, they understand, you know, what having a legacy is. Some people, and I said this, 11 months ago, some people on the outside uh, that aren't on the inside will judge it by, you know, championships and trophies, and that's fine, you know. Uh, I know what that looks like, too, very well. Uh, but I'm not going to, you know, every team's different. Every team's different. The DNA's different. The makeup's different. What happens during the course of a season is different. Circumstances are, are different. And, you know, I want how committed is this team? How hard do they work? What does the investment look like? You know, do they compete every day? Uh, do they maintain humility? Are they maturing uh, on and off the field? Um, are they, they loving their teammates? We have a selfless uh, sense of oneness to us. You know, all these different things that go into it that really, man, that team was about this. Now, uh, you know, I'll take, go back just a, a few years in, in 2014. Uh, we had a quarterback that blew his ACL out, you know, early in the year. And back it comes in. We went through a few losses. And, man, but that team just kept fighting and 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 just continued to believe, you know. And, uh, uh, and that was coming off a, a year. Maybe we won 11 or 12 games the previous two years. And so there's some disappointment. Maybe I think it's a three-game streak where we, we didn't do so well. And uh, but had a really, really strong finish. And, uh, and one of the funnest years I've ever had, you know, and because of uh, the fight and the belief and, you know, and responding the right way, uh, all those things matter. You know, when, you're, when you love the guys that you're doing it with every day and you're completely, totally committed yourself, you, you go through, through things together, there's a, a sense of appreciation through the accomplishment too, you know, finishing the way uh, that you're capable of, of finishing. And so a lot goes into it, Barry. I don't think it's any one thing, but I want to see continued improvement, continued fight, continued belief, uh, continue to go to work every single day. Not just show up. Don't you, everybody in the country showing up right now. I'm talking about um, finishing with an exclamation mark and, and finish what you said that you, you, you wanted to accomplish. And you said you were going to be committed to doing it this way. So we got a vision board in our in our team meeting room. Every single player's up there and what they said they were going to be committed to. So I hold them accountable to that every day and I hold certainly hold myself accountable to showing up. They're counting on me to show up every single day, you know, with the same juice, the same energy as my first press conference to the first practice, the first mat drills. You know, my job is to show up the same every day, you know, and bring everybody levels, uh, bring everyone's levels up. And so we do that, you know, I inspire, I motivate, I challenge. Uh, demand and be relentless for improvement and uh, but at the same time you do it through uh, again love and respect and trust and you know, com communication and uh, honesty you know all those things we're not going to change now and all of a sudden uh, oh man you're uh, you know some people oh it's not his guys or uh, wait till I'm not I'm waiting for nothing there ain't no waiting for nothing you you know uh, you have an understanding of what excellence looks like, and, and you're pushing and challenging and fighting for that every single day, trying to get the most, and squeeze every ounce of what they got uh, into, into improving and getting them to, you know, play to beyond their ability and certainly us as a team. And, and hopefully by the end of the year, we're peaking, you know, at the right time. I do believe our best football is still in front of us. Just a few more, second row, John Shen. Yeah, Brent, you mentioned 
building your identity in your opening statement. How's that gone this year? Or, or is is there a blueprint for how you can do that each season? Yeah, that's a that's another really good question, and I don't know about the blueprint. I think it starts with your beliefs and your values, uh, things that you believe in. Um, certainly, the the group of players. Uh, but what I've loved through, uh, again, there's a lot of guys that have never had three losses uh, in a row, right? And certainly there's a bunch of them they are used to uh, playing for a championship. And uh, what I love is this group has not lost their identity. I know that. Uh, I love that. I, I, I see that. That's what my eyes tell me every day. We haven't lost our identity. And I, in, in, in a, a world where they're, they can be exposed to a lot and uh, it's easy to... Uh, you know, you know, if you, the seeds of doubt will always create a way out, right? Or seeds of belief, you know, will always look for a way forward, right? If you believe, you'll find a way. You'll believe, you'll find the thing, and it, you'll, you'll continue to move forward. If if you let these seeds of doubt, people begin walking in your mind with their dirty feet, you'll you'll look for a way out. That there's all kinds of holes in the fence if you're looking for one. And so, for, for me, what I've seen is a group of guys that has not, we have not lost our identity. And, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll have that, that, that thumbprint, that fingerprint of Team 128 will, will be completely and totally defined after our last game. And, and there'll be a story that everybody, you know, can tell. And uh, we all, uh, I think it's easy to, uh, to say what we would like that thing to read, how we'd like that thing to read. You know, if that's winning 10 games, uh, that's, that's as much as we're maybe capable of. That's, that's fine. Now, I think mathematically, maybe it's 11 games. You know, I don't know. But, uh, but just play to our ability and, and do it the right way. You know, be who we say we are and uh, who we say we want to be. And, be. and stay committed to what we said we, we were going to be committed to. And that's when I say not losing our identity, that's what I'm talking about as well. Yeah, Brent, uh, Jaleel Farouk stepped up Saturday. You figured out a way to get him the ball in different ways and kind of utilize his, his talents. Is that is See, I like bragging on our guys. This is a good question. They're all great questions. This is good. Yeah, there's plenty to brag on. Well, so is this the way you used him? Is that the way you guys envisioned him at the beginning of the year, or has that kind of evolved as the season? I think it's fair to say it's evolved. Um, and, and, boy, he, he displayed great toughness. Um, certainly a versatile skill set. Made a couple of huge plays. He had the, we gave him, uh, you know, the play of the game, and we gave him uh, the player of the game. Uh, had 100 plus total yards on the day, but played with tremendous will and passion and toughness uh, that can deflate. You know, he's over there on their sideline and a couple of them, and that's deflating. You know, when you see a guy, uh, you know, just showing tremendous will and uh, toughness. Uh, so, but he has developed that too, and uh, he's one of our uh, earned his first uh, uh, captain uh, position this week uh, through his work and his consistency, his his dedication, and his toughness. So for that's a guy that you see again from where he started to where he is. I know he had the really good showing in the, uh, in our bowl game. And, uh, and then, again, just see incremental improvement uh, for a guy and, and expanded. He, I thought he's, he's really played pretty dang good all year. And uh, so this is finding the things that he does well and then, you know, capitalizing, uh, nurturing that in your game plan uh, is what you're seeing. Over the left side, Mason Young. Yeah, Brent, it seemed like there were just a, a handful of deep balls on Saturday from Dylan, whether to Theo or Marvin, that were really close. What did you see on some of those plays that may or not, that may have been the separator? And when those aren't falling, is your kind of admonition to Dylan and Jeff just to keep trying those out? <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, there's a delicate balance. You know, at some point in time, you know, right? Hey, Chief, that isn't working, right? Uh, but, you know, if, now if, if, if it was they were just blanketed and the guys are not open, um, I think if, what you're alluding to is that uh, there's probably four times that we had a, a step plus and, uh, and just couldn't quite get it done. Uh, I thought the play designs, it, it, a couple of them were really, really excellent play designs to, to get guys open. Uh, that's part of it, that's, which, which was good. I'm like, 
because these offensive coordinators like they have this great play they come out in the first 10 plays they run it and then like where in the hell did that play go that worked so well uh and i think sometimes you think well i got all these other plays i got all these sheets of paper i got all this stuff you know i got to get to my other plays right all these amazing plays and then uh, we forget the, the ones that work so i'm literally hey uh jeff uh, you know that one we had the three receivers that, that triple post call it again <laughs> the one that was wide open uh, but um but yeah you need to be efficient you know uh, you, you can't live in you know second and ten uh, all day that's a that's not being efficient and again play the game the way it needs to be played uh, you're executing keep going to the well and you got to be again. You got to be mindful. Timing's everything. Use your instincts. Uh, you know, uh, those big plays, explosive plays, um, have been good for us. You know, they're good for any offense. And so, you know, calculated, uh, you'll continue to you know go to those at the right time. But uh, you got to be. There's a level of patience that you got to you know play with too. You know, and match. Again, what I've loved is win in different kind of ways. And uh, in in some ways comfortably you know so uh anyway i think jeff's done a good job and the players um, have done a good job of of uh executing a lot of those this year sooner scoop hd